Hello everyone! I'm doing another test try today and today I've got the Street Twin at my disposal. This is the new uh, bike by Triumph which is to replace the, uh, the Bonville. And although they completely changed the bike because it's a new bike from, from all the way from the bottom to the top um, it still has that same um, classic look and feel to it, which you know a lot of people seem to like these days. Uh, me included, I must admit. And first off, I just need to say that um, when this bike was uh, presented, uh, the figures for the um, the engine seemed kind of disappointing. Um, it was presented as being the same 900 uh, cc engine as the Bonneville but with less power. I'm not sure what the Bonneville had, the Bonneville had, but this one has 55 horsepower and 18 newton meters. It's got more torque, but it's got less power. Um, and I was a bit apprehensive about that. But then you look at the sheets and the figures and it turns out that whereas the Bonneville has a high peak at completely at the end of the rev range, uh, this one, on the other hand, has more power all the way through the rev range up to about four or five thousand RPM, and it drops off there. Basically, in the RPM range that people hardly ever ride in, that's where it drops off. And of course, it has way more torque all around the rev range, which, to be honest, you don't feel it. You don't feel that it has less power, which is absolutely great. and that sound. Oh my god, it sounds really, really, really good. This one does have the uh, Vance and Heinz uh, exhaust system on it. Dual exhaust. Uh, it sounds very good. It's very, very, very good to listen to. It's got a lot of pop to it, which is also down to the, uh, the alternate um, arrangement of the pistons. Because they don't move in sync, they are out of sync by 270 degrees, so they move like this. Which, which also gives that um, almost thumping uh, sort of sound that uh, uh, the, the, Harley Davids the Harley Davidsons uh, have, basically. The bike feels light. It feels, yeah, this is this is good. It, it, it doesn't feel awkward in any way. The the position of the handlebars is good. The riding position is good. You're a bit more forward than on the uh, the Bonneville, but it's it, it's good. It feels good. It really does. Uh, other than that, while I'm here, uh, we have an onboard computer now. Uh, with the usual suspects, as you'll find these days, you've got the odometer, trip computer, well, two trip computers, current consumption, average, cons average consumption, um, mileage uh, to an empty tank, and a clock. And, of course, uh, there's a traction control setting, which I'll get to in a moment. And you can see the amount of fuel in the tank, which you couldn't do on the previous Bonneville, which is an improvement. And you can even see uh, the gear you're in. So I'm now in third gear. And off it goes. The brakes are really good as well. Just two fingers and uh, it stops right away. There's, there's no latency there. It's, uh, even though it's only a single disc, I believe. Let's just have a see it. Look, yeah. It's uh, just a single disc at the front with two pistons, but it's more than enough for this bike. I'm not sure what it weighs, but uh, it should be around 200-something uh, kilograms. It's not that heavy. Um, I, I, the, the previous Bonneville wasn't uh, uh, lightweight, to be honest. This one actually feels sort of the same. One of the uh, first things that I noticed, though, was the clutch. This clutch feels very, very light. Just with one finger, I can... 
I can pull it in no problem. It, it's um, it's got this this um, uh, I don't know what the name is of the uh, technology, but it's basically like a clutch assist, and that makes it feel very very light. This is a very uh, very good system. So what we have here is the standard Belgian exam course, and I'm going to try it out to um, to see how the handling is. There's really nothing wrong here. Turns on a dime. It really does. I'm not even uh, at the steering lock here. Not even pushing the, the bike down a lot, and it's it's really good. I'm just going to get out of his hair because that's uh, an instructor and he's about to give a class so I'm just going to move down the street and uh, talk about uh, the bike a bit. Alright, the 2017 Street Twin. This is how it looks. It's a really, really good looking piece of kit this. Well, if you like it or not, that is of course a very personal thing. But um, I think they've sort of captured the essence of Bonneville here and still keep it fresh it's, it's not it doesn't look as modern as stay as a, uh, a scrambler a Ducati scrambler it does look a bit more classic but I like it I really do of course this new one uh, is partially air-cooled as you can see by the fins here, but it also has liquid cooling, but the Triumph engineers have really done their best to hide all this stuff away, so the, you have the radiator here, which is the actually the only visible thing, because the uh, water tubes just go underneath and right into the engine block, so there's not a lot of that, that rubber stuff uh, all over the bike to, to, to pipe the, the water around. That's, that's very well done. Very well done. Of course, it is available in a plethora of of colors and accessories and saddles and seats and 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 uh, saddle bags and and whatnot. There's like I don't know 150 different uh, accessories from Triumph itself, and of course the aftermarket will uh, will provide as well within a short time. I, I am sure. Now concerning the uh, maneuverability, this is a really nice touch by the way, the Triumph logo in the headlight. Uh, concerning the maneuverability, it, it's, it's excellent. It is really, really, really good. It turns really short. I would say this is actually a very, very good beginner's bike. It is. Uh, the only problem is it's got 55 horsepower, which means that uh, in, in most countries, I know for sure in Belgium and in the UK, you could only ride this with a full license. I think in the UK you could only ride it with a full license. In Belgium, at least, you cannot, you can only ride it with a full license, which is a shame, because if they'd made, um, what is it, a 35 kilowatt version of this, this would be a perfect, perfect beginner's bike. It, it does, it isn't demanding, it's, it, feels quite forgiving when you're riding it and it really turns very easily it, it, it is it's really good for uh, it, it would be an excellent beginner's bike all right enough talk let's get on the bike again now on the uh, the, the handlebars here we got a few more buttons than we did on the last one Uh, we've got the menu button, the indicator here, the uh, the, the horn, and th there's a, a menu button here to switch the display so you don't have to lean forward on the dash itself. We've got the hazard lights over here, and uh, the um, starter, oh, can't go in here, the starter is now this dual sort of arrangement, look at that, in third gear where it's nearly standing still, and third gear just pulls away, it's very nice. 
And the starter is this like uh, arrangement that you could find on, uh, I think it's Ducatis and such, that the uh, emergency switch has been uh, combined with the starter button, which is fine. Now uh, there's the uh, consumption here. Triumph claims that the bike has a much lower consumption than the previous one and uh, I don't know how many RPMs I'm doing right now but I'm in third gear doing 60 kph and I've got uh, 3.5 3.6 liters per 100 kilometers appearing on the dash I'm not sure what the previous one used but that is quite low by comparison I think mine the, the i800 would be around four and a half ish now I think maybe four four and a half so it, it does uh, seem to be um, a frugal bike, if you will, which, you know, can be important for some people. Now, if I look around the next setting, I don't know how uh, other people have been riding this bike, but the average consumption at this point is 5.4, uh, assuming that many people will have ridden it quite hard, because, you know, it's a demo. Um, that is, that's still okay. That's... Uh, it's still quite low. Now one thing I didn't discuss yet is that um, this new bike has ABS and uh, traction control. Uh, it, it must have ABS. It has ABS as standard because it must have ABS because of uh, European regulations that came into being uh, at the beginning of 2016, meaning that every new model that was introduced had to have ABS. And it does have ABS. And Triumph d just decided to throw in um, uh, uh, traction control as well, free of charge. And this is possible because this bike, like the Tiger 800 and the new uh, uh, Explorer, and no, the, the Explorer they had it, uh, the Tiger 800, uh, the new Street Twin, I believe, uh, they all have um, a ride by wire. Now, this one doesn't have riding modes. But I believe the Thruxton that's coming in May uh, will have them. Now the brakes are fine. Right here, it, it stops very well. But I have to say, at the uh, maneuver, when I did the maneuvers and I did the emergency stop, I did have to pull back the lever quite far. And um, it didn't slow down as I would have, have expected it to. It, it went on a little bit further than I would have expected it. Uh, by comparison, my Tiger, um, when I do that same maneuver, stops about two or three meters earlier, I think, at, at about the same speed. Uh, the speed was measured, apparently, by the uh, device, and it was 55 kilometers per hour. And it was still well within the range with uh, what you would have to do uh, legally. Uh, to pass your, your your test, so that's not a problem at all. As, as actually, at 55, you, I would have had a, a lot to spare, a lot. Uh, but it didn't break as I, I expected it to, but that's probably because it only has the one um, brake disc. I do believe that the, T, the Bonneville T120 that's coming out next month uh, will have two discs, although I'm not sure of that, but I know for certain that the Thruxton will. The Thruxton will have like proper, proper brakes at the front. And at the very end, uh, other than that, uh, the ABS didn't even kick in. I mean, it braked fine. Just the braking distance was maybe a bit longer than I expected, but it braked perfectly fine. Uh, just at the very, very end did the uh, ABS uh, kick in. And I have to say, I braked as hard as I could. So there's there's definitely enough grip there on these uh, new tires, which were basically made especially for this um, a street twin range. So no complaints there. Power delivery is is really great. It does have power all the way through the rev range, and it's only when you really really chase it up into high revs that it drops off. But to be honest, most of the time you're not going to be riding in high revs anyway. So. For pretty much all the conditions I've been riding in, it, it does have plenty of power. 
that respect, it, it reminds me of the uh, NC, the Honda NC700X that I rode a couple of years ago. And uh, I was also very amazed about how much power it had low down, how much torque it had low down. I really like that about that bike, and I really like that about this bike as well. Even though it's got fairly low horsepower figures, uh, this, this, it doesn't ask it, it doesn't need it. Alright, in conclusion, I'd have to say Triumph has done a really fantastic job making this bike. It looks good, although that's obviously subjective, but it rides very, very well. They've done a, a really fantastic job, and um, yeah, this bike gets a thumbs up from me. It most definitely does. Now, I also want to thank my uh, my dealer here, uh, BMC at Alsenide. They have very kindly provided this bike for me. So, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.